Hey, so quite a few people have asked about making the cinnamon rolls. So I figured I would go ahead and just make a video for you guys and show you how I make them. Um, sometimes, I guess visually seeing things, it makes it a little bit easier. So the first step is going to be uh, measuring out 240 milliliters of almond milk and 42 grams of light butter. You can also use country crock light. Um, I can't believe it's not butter, one of those types of things. It doesn't have to be light butter specifically. But I went ahead and did that already. And so you put the butter in the almond milk and then you're gonna warm it up. I just warm it up in the microwave. Uh, and then you wanna make sure that it's not too hot when you add your yeast because if your uh, milk and butter is too cold, it takes too long for the yeast to activate, which is fine if you have plenty of time. Um, if it's too hot, you'll actually end up killing the yeast. So either way, you're not gonna get the product um, that you were hoping for. So you wanna make sure that your temperature is like bath water temperature, about 110 degrees. If you're concerned about um, activating yeast, you can always buy a food thermometer. And my other thing, when you do pour, so I'm gonna end up pouring it in this bowl, it's winter time, it's cold. This is gonna drop the temperature of this a lot faster than if we were making these in July. So my milk and my butter is a little bit warmer um, than it technically should be, but as you all know, once you pour something in, especially in a middle bowl, it's gonna drop temperature pretty quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in my mixing bowl and then have my rapid rise, it's instant yeast. There are two different kinds you can buy at the grocery store. The other one will take much longer to rise. Um, if you have time, again, like I said, if, if you're not wanting to do this right in this amount of time, you can actually let yeast rise overnight in the refrigerator or on the countertop. It doesn't have to be something that's quick. But I'm just gonna evenly spread it, shake it out all over the milk. And then you're just gonna let it sit and it's gonna activate for 10 minutes. Um, so what I, I like to do again, because my countertop is really cold, I'll just put um, like a hot pad underneath it so that it's not touching the granite itself. So I'm gonna move this over here to the side. And set my timer for 10 minutes. Now while that's going, mix your flowers together in another bowl. Um, it's just gonna make things move a lot smoother. There's a lot of different components to this recipe, so I typically find that if I kinda have the next thing prepped ahead of time, it's gonna make the transition a lot easier and make making rolls a lot stress, less stressful. So we're gonna go ahead and use um, regular flour, and I have got 225 grams. And coconut flour is 36. You could probably end up making these with like all coconut or a lot more coconut and less flour. Uh, you're always going to want to mix your flours. You're going to get a much more authentic taste than if you were to use 100% coconut. Also, if you did make the decision you were going to, you would you would basically quarter the amount of flour. So you would probably only use about, um, let's say, 100 grams total of coconut flour. You're also going to have to double your liquids. Um, coconut is extremely absorbent and you will end up with tiny little rock hard cinnamon rolls. So I like to mix several flours again to give it the most realistic texture and flavor. Uh, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix in our protein. You can either use the PE Science Snickerdoodle or you can use vanilla and add in some extra cinnamon just to give it that flavor. Um, the nice thing about using protein powder is it's already sweetened and so you're not having, it's actually gonna end up cutting down on sugars and stuff that are in your recipes. And this one is 90 grams. Oops. 
That's all I had left. Look at that. Because I need more. All right. So I typically will use a fork and whisk this so that it's all um, well mixed. That's going to end up making it transfer into the yeast mixture a little bit easier. So let me grab a fork. Okay, so my yeast has activated for the last 10 minutes. Now we're going to add in our salt and sugar. So it's a quarter teaspoon of salt. Let's not add dog hair in there. And 12 grams of sugar. We're going to mix that in to the yeast and I've got my mixed up flour mixture here so let me move my scale I'm going to slowly add about a half a cup at a time flour into the yeast and mix it up and it's going to start out pretty clumpy But it will come together. Again, like I told you, coconut flour is extremely absorbent, but it's actually at the very beginning when you put it in liquid, it's not. So if it sits for a few minutes, it actually becomes, that's when it starts to really absorb. Um, so that even helps too after kind of mixing it and letting it sit for just a second. Uh, it's, it allows the coconut to start to absorb some of that moisture. So now my, my gooey dough is starting to come together. You see, still runny. But I've got probably a third of my flour mixture left over here, so maybe another cup or so. And as the recipe says, once it gets to a point where it's too hard to mix uh, with a spatula or spoon, that's when we'll turn it out onto the countertop and start to knead it with more flour. So it doesn't stick to your counter and your hands and everything else. And it's really starting to really starting to come together now. you can see it's much more of a ball of dough now it's not quite as gooey and I'm gonna add the last of my flour in and then again because it's cold today it's actually 27 here um, my granite countertops are freezing and unfortunately when you put something like this on a cold countertop it sticks so I use Whoops, my cutting board. And uh, the temperature is much warmer than my countertop is, so I have a lot less issues with sticking. All right, so this is now coming together to where it's, I'm having a hard time getting the remaining flour to mix in. As you can see, 
So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle more flour on my cutting board and turn my dough out. start to knead it. At first it is going to still be sticky so you're going to want to move it kind of quickly through your hands so that your hand doesn't get stuck all over you. Um, but as it continues to come together it will be less and less sticky. Uh, like I had said in the recipe you want to really make sure you do a good job kneading uh, under Ned under kneaded, <laughs> under, under kneaded dough, under ned dough, I don't know, what's the word, um, will actually end up creating very dense, flat cinnamon rolls, and we all know we want poofy cinnamon rolls, don't we? You can also use your uh, KitchenAid mixer you just want to make sure you watch it because, unfortunately, even though we have a kneading option on those things, a lot of times um, we can over knead things really easily. You can also, I'm going to spray a little bit of oil on my hands. That will keep the dough from sticking to my hands. But it is, I mean, it's, it's sticky. It's not, I don't look like some people we know, but... Um, and you may hear me grabbing in the flour, but I'm really just, it's a dust. I'm not putting heaps of flour in this because that's the other issue. Too much flour will definitely cause some major issues um, with being tough. And we don't want tough cinnamon rolls either. So my dough is definitely becoming a very soft, pliable ball, which is exactly what we wanted. Um... I will need this for a few more minutes and then show you guys the next step. Okay, so I have kneaded the dough. So we've got this nice soft ball. It's not super sticky. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I didn't clean my bowl. You don't always have to. If you if your bowl is really sticky inside, I would I would clean it because your, your dough will end up sticking bad. Mine's not, it's still very powdery inside. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use olive oil. Spray it. It's just so your dough doesn't stick as it's rising. And remember to make sure you spray up here too because your dough is going to poof up. Um, then go ahead, again, like I told you, cold. So I'm putting it in here. I'm going to put a hot pad underneath it and a towel on top of it to trap as much of the warmth as possible. And I'm going to actually set it inside of my microwave. We're not cooking it, but I'm gonna set it in my microwave, set my timer for an hour and allow it to sit in there, which is probably the warmest place in my kitchen. My oven is too, but I need to start to preheat my oven. Um, so I would put it in the microwave, some area like that is far, it's free from draft, uh, free from cold, temperature changes, that kind of stuff, and just stick it in there and let it sit for an hour. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Alrighty, so it has been an hour and the dough has been sitting and rising undisturbed. Um, while the dough was finishing rising, I went ahead and mixed the stuff for the filling, which is, let me get my recipe pulled back up again. Um, cinnamon, Splenda for baking, and Truvia baking blend. And then I took my light butter, uh, 24 grams, 28 grams, sorry and melted that in the microwave. So I've got liquid butter ready and my filling ready so that once we roll out our dough, we'll be able to add that to it. Uh, you're gonna also need some sort of like a pastry brush or something to brush the butter onto your rolls. So we now have amazing dough. As you can see, so much bigger. Oh, and there it goes. Just rolls right on out because we had oiled it. And again, we need to lightly flour your surface. And then 
we're going to roll it out um, into a rectangle as best a rectangle as you can. Also we're going to need to either flour or grease your rolling pin should you own one. <laughs> Megan will never watch this so she, she won't realize that I said that. <laughs> she knows how to make them now. So you're going to want your dough to be fairly thin. Um, I mean, not paper by any means, but and you also want to make sure that it does not uh, it does get sticky as you roll it out a little bit. So you want to make sure that it also is not sticking to your surface because that will make it very very difficult to roll it properly. All right, so we've got a little bit of a thick spot here in the middle. Let me roll that out. I think we're good. And you, I will show you, mine is not a perfect rectangle. I'm not Martha Stewart when it comes to some of this stuff. So if anything, you just want to make sure that your dough feels even. Um, you know, it's going to give your cinnamon rolls more uniformity. So here's what mine looks like. I pretty much filled up my cutting board. It's a pretty large cutting board, but just uh, use that. So now we're going to go ahead, use the butter, um, brush it on there. Don't over brush it. It's really just enough to get your cinnamon and sugar to stick. Um, overdoing it can kind of make your dough start to come apart. So make sure you definitely get all of the dough. Don't leave your edges because what ends up happening is the edge actually, you know, is part of one of the cinnamon rolls and it it almost gets kind of dried out tasting. So you want to make sure that all of your dough has got butter on it. So I do have butter left over because we're going to brush the tops of the rolls. Now I'm just going to take this, I'm going to sprinkle it evenly. I try to kind of start almost a little light because um, I want to make sure that I get enough. I don't want to have big chunks of cinnamon in some places and None. Again, making sure you get all the way to your edges, because your edge is cinnamon roll too. There should be more than enough in here. Always can go super, super heavy on this if you'd like to, though. Um, if you know, if you eat cinnamon rolls that are at the mall, like at Cinnabon or something like that, they've got some. Some serious stuff in the center of those things. Okay, so here is what it looks like now that I've got all my cinnamon. It start obviously some of the butter and stuff starting to absorb. So now I'm gonna roll this into the like cinnamon roll log, I guess. Get my phone to stand back up. Okay. Remove this. So you're just gonna start at one end. And you're gonna want, let's see, I'll start it over here so you can see. 
I'm going to start really tight. And you're going to keep rolling it up. So once you've got it rolled all the way up, you're going to want to make sure that you leave it seam side down. So now we've got this roll. We're going to leave it seam side down and we're going to, I, I just usually cut mine starting in half with the serrated knife. Serrated knife. That's going to work the best to cut it nice. Uh, so I cut it in half that way I, when I usually make I, I, this recipe makes 10 so it makes it easier for me to divide that um, So not applying a lot of pressure But you want to make sure you get all the way through there and I will show you There we go So now we're going to cut it into 10 equal parts and then put it in a greased, I put mine in a square, you can put it in a round, whatever. Um, this is an eight by eight square, but I made sure it's oiled, you can see that. Uh, I use a decent amount of oil, but that's just to make sure that they don't stick. Then once you get them all in there, you're gonna cover that in saran wrap and let them continue to rise while your oven heats up to 350. Now that I've got all 10 of them cut, uh, they're not touching each other in the pan. They're all slightly separated because as they uh, cook, as they bake, they will end up fluffing up and touching each other. So now you're going to brush the tops with the rest of your butter. Then put saran wrap on the top and let them continue to sit and rise while your oven heats to 350. Uh, once it has heated, take saran wrap off and bake them for 20 to 25 minutes or until you start to notice the edges are getting brown. Uh, it's something you're really going to want, want to watch because if you let them overcook, they end up getting really crusty on the edges and then they end up tasting kind of dried out. So really pay attention, I'd say starting at about 20 minutes to make sure that they are not overdone. Okay, so my cinnamon rolls are out of the oven. Um, they were only in for about 20 minutes, but the tips of the tops are starting to get brown. So like I said, I wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't overcook them. I'd let them cool for, I don't know, five, six minutes, and then I would go ahead and put on the frosting. Um, I went ahead and mixed it up. Just I just use a little whisk. Um, I sweeten it to taste, even though I know I put uh, specific measurements of each thing, and then if you happen to like frosting that's a little sweeter or a little less sweet, um, maybe a little bit more butter, less sour, less cream cheese, totally up to you. So I would go off of that and then just tweak the recipe based on your own personal preference. Literally just put it on there and they are good to go.